Hello YouTubers, this is Dalek Shram, aka Mark. Uh, as you may know, I have been attending many sci-fi conventions and events in 2013, and as we begin to start 2014, I thought it would be good to have a look back at my top favourite events of 2013. At number 5, a new event for the National Space Centre in Leicester, Japanorama. This was a great event to go to as I got to see some Japanese drumming, some martial arts, and I also learnt how you made sushi. Japanorama also featured a cosplay competition where young people dress up as characters from anime stories or TV shows or films and the audience had to cheer for the ones that they liked. In my opinion, they are all winners, because you have to admire the amount of time and effort they've put into their costumes. The event also featured dance performances by Becky Krull, singing from the UK members of a Japanese pop group, Oishi Ishigo, Scarlet, Cherry and Kelsey. So at number 5, we have Japanorama. Three, two, one, activate! One of my favourite TV game shows was Robot Wars, which is all about, well, robots fighting. That's why at number 4, it's Robots Live, the European Championship, which was held at the University of East Anglia in Norwich. This was hosted by Ed Hoppet from the Storm 2 team, current Robot Wars World Champions. This event featured some of the most popular robots that you may have seen on Robot Wars. Bear Moth, Terahertz, Chronic, Tough as Nails, Danton Kier, you name it. Most of the robots at the Robots Live events have CO2 powered flippers, like Chaos 2. Now I know what you're thinking, that will be a bit boring, but you have to remember, because this is a live tour, spinning robots like Hypnodisc and Typhoon 2 are not allowed to take part. Swinging weapons like axes and hammers are still allowed, and they're more destructive than you think. Look what happened to Dam Tonkir when it went up against Terahertz and Tomb Raider. Awesome acts of Terahertz coming down onto Tomb Raider, pummeling those panels, you can see the panels buckling. Ouch. I also got to see Robots Live's new house robot, Goliath. Oh no! Oh no! Goliath has gone into the kill! There's no point telling Robot Live to see through Goliath involved. Goliath just kind of does his own thing. <laughs> Ranked number four, Robots Live, the European Championship. Two thousand and thirteen marks the fiftieth anniversary of Doctor Who, which is why my third favourite event is Science of the Time Lords. Again, this was held at the National Space Centre. I couldn't go to the event in London, so this was the next best thing. Many people turned up dressed as incarnations of the Doctor, some of his companions, allies, Daleks, and Cybermen. 
Again, like the cosplay performance at Japanorama, the people at this event had spent a lot of time putting their costumes together. I was particularly impressed with the people who dressed up as Time Lords. What do you call this piece? I've always wondered what they call it. Is it head shield, head, head collar. Doesn't really kind of. Yeah. Is it very heavy to wear? No, it's no, quite it's light, light actually. The biggest problem is if you're out. We we, we did an event in Leeds um, about last year or so, yeah. and we were walking around and it was really high wind, so you get kind of blown <laughs> thrown backwards. Or it comes the other way, and you're just thrown forwards. It's like, yeah, it's like a sail in those kind of. For special guests, this event had five of the Doctor's companions. Sophie Aldred, Louise Jensen, Fraser Hines, Nicola Bryant and Sarah Sutton. For me, the highlight of the event was meeting Sarah, because out of all the Doctor's companions, Nyssa is my favourite. I asked her and the other guests if they would give a special message to the Doctor Who fans. If you've missed them, then here they are again. Everybody, Sophie Aldrin here, ace from Doctor Who, 50 long years and long may it last. And thank you to all the fans. Keep watching. Hi, I'm Louise Jameson. I played Leela in January the 1st, 1977. My first story went out and here we are. Doctor Who's reached 50 years old, which is surprising because I'm not 50 yet. Anyway, lovely to meet you. I'm having to speak up because in the background is one of my records being played called Punch and Judy Man, <laughs> which I made years ago. Uh, but I'm so pleased they found that all those missing X stories and let's hope they found some more. Patrick, myself, Wendy, and uh, Deborah. Well done, Tony. Roll up, roll up, my friends, you'll get your money's worth. Buy the record. <laughs> And I play Nissa in Doctor Who, and yes. we're celebrating 50 years of the program this year. Thank you to all you fans. Bye! Hello, I'm Nicola Bryant. I play Perry in Doctor Who, and I cannot believe the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who this year. And I'm very excited and very thrilled to be taking part in all the celebrations. And all the time now, I'm sure you feel it too, there's a party atmosphere. So enjoy the celebrations, and thank you for all the love and support. Bye. So, Science of the Time Lords is ranked number three. While some people were celebrating the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who, others were celebrating the 30th anniversary of Terror Hawks, one of Jerry Anderson's shows. So at number two, it's Terror Hawks. Expect the unexpected. This event was hosted by Fanderson, the official Jerry Anderson fan club, and it took place at the Maidenhead Holiday Inn Hotel. This event featured displays of models used in Terror Hawks, original designs, and also costumes and models from other Jerry Anderson shows. There were also some talks from some of the special guests, like John Lee, Stephen Begg, Judy Pierce, and Stephen Woodcock. Also there was Jamie Anderson, Jerry's son, and his mother, Mary. I also got to meet, for the very first time, two YouTubers, Chris Thompson and Jack Knoll, aka The Honest Uni Kid. I've been in to get a couple of footballs and get some zeroids. Yeah. Well, zero footballs. Yeah. Uh, the old ones, zeroids. Yeah. 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 Long in me, see those every week in Woolworths. Uh, yeah. I mean, mother still never bought them. Even when they were reduced. Most of them. A genius at work. It's just finished. Yeah. I've never finished. That's true. Yeah. Never done. No. Hardwick's never done. It's abandoned. Oh, that's right. And I estimate this to be worth about three million. At the end of the event, we all got into teams and had a big quiz night. The winners would receive some of Zelda's cubes. Jack, Chris and I made a team, but unfortunately all the questions were about 20th century TV shows and films, which we didn't know much about. Still, better luck next year. So at number two, it's Terror Hawks. Expect the unexpected. Finally, at number one, my favourite event of all, Brit Sci-Fi 3. This took place again at the National Space Centre, and this was their third Brit Sci-Fi event. 
It's dedicated to all the science fiction TV shows, films, audio plays and novels made in Britain. Thank you. Brit Sci-Fi features interviews with guests, shops that sell some of the old toys and books from the Sci-Fi series, and displays featuring clothes, props, and models used in the shows and films. This year they had the original Moonbase Alpha from Space 1999. When it comes to science fiction made in Britain, I think you have to remember that the British did more than just Doctor Who. There's all of Jerry Anderson's shows like Thunderbirds, Stingray, Captain Scarlet. There's also Red Dwarf, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, The Tomorrow People, Blake Seven, you name it. And thanks to the Brit sci fi events, it helps to get that message out. This year, Brit sci fi 3 was dedicated to the memory of Jerry, who sadly passed away on Boxing Day 2012. So they had a section called Anderson Alley, featuring models, props, and sets used in Jerry Anderson shows. The section also featured Duncan Willis's amazing replicas of Supermarination puppets. Yeah, a, a new head. Nice. Sculpted that to look like Chris Evans some time ago. <laughs> and um, actually, for a little while, put his head on my Parker body with my Parker cat. Um, and I photographed it because Chris Evans owns the original Fab One number plate. Oh wow! Uh, and who knows, he might be interested. This actually head now belongs to my friend here, Larry. And um, we're going to see if perhaps it might do a little bit of promotional work for Chris's charity. Because Chris is promoting um, breast cancer charity. And, uh, there is going to be a pink Rolls Royce that's going to be hired out to whoever wants to hire it for a period of a year, I believe, um, at any time during that year, and the money is going to go to the Chris Evans' breast cancer charity. Great. So, who knows, we're, we're going to see if he might be interested in um, a puppet head of his image, somehow to help promote the charity, which would be nice, wouldn't it? And so, at number one, it's Brit Sci-Fi 3. I hope you've enjoyed this video of my top events in 2013. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.